Randy. Now we've heard from all of our candidates. We'll go about it. We'll start now with uh, Chuck. Chuck Marino. Uh, now, this. Yeah, Peter. You're, you're perfect. You're doing good. Okay, you're good. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Run the tape back. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, um, this is an opportunity to talk about uh, China, uh, China ascending, but uh, the question goes as follows, because I'm not sure of the, the recent developments I saw headlines today, but this says, in light of China's recent threat of war, if necessary, to take over Taiwan, what do you support to deal with this situation? There's some issues that just get me. Uh, being a Marine, um, I understand loyalty. And both with Israel and the fact that uh, Obama let Netanyahu sit in the White House and, um, for an hour, and then when he came into the White House, he lectured in front of the people. And then Taiwan, who's been a loyal friend to the United States and used their bases. I know when we were, when I was in the Marine Corps, and we were taking uh, planes off uh, Japan because Japan wanted all the planes off they were protesting back in the 70s, they went to Taiwan. And now today, we've decided to give up our friends and stick with countries that um, are not our friends. In fact, they are our enemies. China is literally ripping us off. And there's no better way to say it. I want to deal in a global market. And I've got no problem dealing in a global market, as long as the playing field is equal. If anybody's heard, both my wife and I both worked in the automotive for a number of years. One of the national companies I ran was in the automotive. And I understand what the land cost is. I mean, we not, hardly ever get this question about land of cost or, or, or content and what's coming into the United States from China. And today or yesterday, we were just talking about China sending all these panels into the United States, these solar panels, and the content's not right. If one of the United States manufacturers built a product and the content wasn't to the specs, that manufacturer would never build another product again. But China gets one reprieve after another reprieve. And that's the problem with our State Department. They set these treaties that are ambiguous, and they're always to the detriment of our own country. So as far as China is concerned and a war with China, we send a lot of food to China. In fact, we have China more over the barrel than China has us over the barrel. And we just don't take that into consideration. Because we stop sending food, we stop sending some of our crop over there, there are people who don't like that. So. That's what I would do. Thank you, Joe. Sure. Uh, in light of China's recent threat of war, if necessary, to take over Taiwan, what do you support to deal with that situation? You know, this is one of these difficult cases where, um, as a non-interventionist, I, I, I mean, there's a part of me that, on the gut level, just would say, oh, we're not going to let them do that. It be a declaration of war against China. That's what my gut feeling is, but then I have to pause and think, this is, you know, we have, can't afford to defend every country in the world, and we need to be able to defend ourselves. We allowed this situation to get this far because we have not asserted back when Taiwan first became separate or had its own, basically the Chiang Kai-shek regime being retreated back to Taiwan. We never fully insisted on recognizing them as a country. Um, and we need, we, we, if we had done that, we may have been in a different situation, but we've been continuously kind of giving lip service to this idea that, oh, well, they really belong to China, but they're kind of separate or something. And so we're not really in a position to take that kind of bold action. Um, and so what should we do at this point? Um, I'm not sure there's much you can do other than end our um, sweetheart deals that we have with China. And it, it, that may not stop them from um, this unfortunate action if in fact that were to happen. But and for one thing, actually it's going to be up to the President, not the Senate, because the President's going to immediately respond and then it's a matter of whether you vote for declaration of war. But we've built up to a point where we've become dependent on China. I'm concerned about China taking over the United States, not with, with guns and tanks and so on. But economically, I mean, what's up with the light bulb thing? You know what? There's trace metals, and it seems like I'm diverting, but there's trace metals in these light bulbs that happen to only be available in territory China controls. 
Now maybe that's who's behind it, because I don't know any, how many people here were for the light bulb ban? Yeah. So it must be some, they must be getting money from China. And then we have, oh, it's somebody cut up. But then there are those converter boxes. Those were also made in China. Think about it. All right, uh, Scotty, thank you. Uh, Gary, again, in light of China's recent threat of war, if necessary to take over Taiwan, what do you support to deal with that situation? Well, I think the way we deal with that situation is, as a country, as Americans, is to maintain this country's honor and keep our word. We have given our word to defend those people's freedom. And if we break that word, then who will ever trust us again? Well, I think there's a, a sense of national honor involved. We have stood by Taiwan since you know, the, the World War II, basically, when Chiang Kai-shek left uh, the, the mainland. Uh, and Mao Zedong, a communist dictator, uh, you know, the murderer of his own people, took over that country, obviously. And, and, and gratefully, they have reformed to some extent. But I think there's an element of national hypocrisy involved here, too, and something that infuriates me. Number one, you know, Bill Clinton was impeached because he lied about having sex. He should have been impeached for selling missile targeting technology to China. That's what he should have. I mean, that should have been where he was. And one of the things that is most infuriating about the absolute fiscal insanity and irresponsibility in Washington, D.C., is it puts us in a nation in a position of being a debtor to China. Can we be an entirely free agent? Are we able to make entirely rational and objective decisions when they hold the bulk of our national debt? That's one of the byproducts of this insanity in Washington. If we're going to be a free and independent country throughout the rest of our existence and our children and grandchildren's lives, we have got to cut federal spending, reform our tax code, send people of strong moral character to Washington who will get us out of debt and possible subservience to a country like China. And then we will be in a much better position to stand up to them. I don't think the threat of war is realistic. They don't want war with the United States of America any more than we want war with them. If we stand firm, be an honorable country, keep our word, and get out of debt, and that'll be a much less pressing issue we gotta face in the future. Randy, in light of China's recent threat of war, if necessary, to take over Taiwan, what would you support to deal with that situation? Again, if we were not in debt as heavily as we are, the, the answer is straightforward and easy. We need to support our ally, Taiwan, against our enemy. I considered our enemy, communist China, and I'm going to call it that name. They do have our technology. I had a dinner recently with a Dr. Kaufman, who was a former aerospace engineer from the University of Michigan. This was last week. Marcia and I met with him. And he's got chapter and verse on how we have given, as indicated by Gary, uh, we have given our technology in, in missiles, in guidance systems, in warheads from the University of Michigan, one of the biggest perpetrators of this, to communist China. And just because we're, we're interested in the dollars. But the problem is what Robert Gates had to say before he left as Secretary of Defense. He said America needs to choose. Is it going to be a, a, a powerhouse in this world? Or is it going to be a welfare state? And uh, we have to choose. Are we going to truly be a superpower, or are we going to be a welfare state? And we've chosen to be a welfare state. And uh, that is why we're going down the tubes. We don't have the financial wherewithal to, to maintain these wars. And we owe over a trillion dollars to China. And I'll say parenthetically, we're still giving them money in our foreign aid. Now tell me that makes sense. And we're giving them all of the, the technology that we have. I'm telling you, they have infiltrated our government at many levels, as this doctor told us. And again, I can give you the specifics. They have moles throughout our government. I'm not a conspiratorial thinker. But I'm just telling you that, that, that this is an issue. I know firsthand that they've broken into the offices of someone I've worked with in the area of energy. I've done some energy research. The Chinese, the FBI, I figured out are behind this. Folks, we have a problem. But again, number one has to be to get this debt that grows at $76,000 every second. We got to get it down now. Thank you. 
And let's see, we started with Chuck. So Peter, uh, Randy, thank you, Randy. Peter, uh, Peter Kanechi. In light of China's recent threat of war, if necessary, to take over Taiwan, what would you support to deal with that situation? Well, I think what we ought to do is switch locations here. <laughs> I, I myself feel that um, we have to support Taiwan. In Washington, it seems like everything's totally upside down in Washington because our quote-unquote leaders have no conception of national sovereignty, have no conception of strength, have no conception of what a superpower actually is. I think back if um, we were looking at a Reagan administration, Reagan said peace through strength. Right now we're kind of like a uh, beggar, basically, for China. It's true. We have our debt. You know, we've allowed China to buy our debt. We've allowed China to go through and drill in the Gulf of Mexico <coughs> and pull all, all of our rights out. We're no longer acting as a superpower. We're no longer acting well as the world's superpower, as the world's uh, super economic power. And we are. We still are. We are winners. We're always going to be winners. The problem that we have right now is our government. So what I'm for is, it goes back to the very, very first question that was asked, you know, what should um, the influence of government be? We have to get government out of every aspect of our lives. And we have to force government to deal with the functions that they're allocated, that they're authorized to deal with. And the major function that they're supposed to deal with is the uh, defense of the nation. That's all. They're not supposed to be dealing with health and human services. They're not supposed to be dealing with education, with energy, with anything. It's a defense of the nation. And if we had the strongest defense in the world, which we easily could, nations would respect us. And the question about China going, in, going into Taiwan wouldn't even exist because nations would fear us. We wouldn't abuse that power. We never have. But we would be able to defend ourselves and our allies. Thank you.